Welcome everyone to episode zero of The Cipher, where we will be demonstrating how you, the viewer, have been missing important messages hidden within your favorite media. In today's video, we will be analyzing a series of three videos published by Goodnight Moon, GB ASMR, and Marno ASMR on November 26th of 2019. In doing so, we hope to demonstrate the importance of context to you. Let us begin with the following section from GB's video. Did you see that? Let's watch it one more time. Here we listen to Goodnight Moon say the word butter waffles. But we see something different. We see a mouth shape that looks more like butternut waffles. But that doesn't make any sense, does it? What even is a butternut waffle? Buttermilk, perhaps, but not butternut. Let's watch that one more time. It's clear that she is mouthing one thing, but saying another. That begs the question, though. Why? Well... This ties to context that you, the viewer, probably don't have and wouldn't have unless I were here bringing it to you. See, on October 30th, 2019, I quit an exclusive engineering job working for the prison system. I made a spectacular exit, capturing the attention of 100 people before I left. And I did this in large part because of Goodnight Moon and her friends. You may read more about this at my website, linked to number one below. Suffice it to say, Goodnight Moon would publish a Making Butternut Squash Soup video just five days later. At the time, this didn't have much meaning to me. However, I did connect Butternut Squash to the abbreviation BS. In essence, I suspected that this video may be confirmation of what I already knew, that Goodnight Moon is selling a misinformation story to the world. It's all bullshit. That very same day, two significant things happened. 1. Angelica ASMR would plant a seed in my head, saying that the FBI were monitoring all of my devices and trying to set me up with a woman. And 2. A brand new subreddit was created to promote the massive and fake conspiracy theory surrounding the 5th of September 2020. I have seen so many connections to 5-9 that I truly wonder if all of this is being orchestrated by the FBI. My suspicions were later bolstered when Ruby Netherwood mentioned butternut squash on November 16th. Would you like to stay tonight for, for some uh, roasted butternut squash and mushroom buttons? More than anyone involved in this, I believe that Ruby's story is one of the most important. She ties all parties together. I've written about her at length here. Four days later, I would make the connection, and I would respond in kind. I would confirm my receipt of the message by writing about butternut squash on my website. And now, butternut squash would return just six days later, as if to confirm that somebody, somewhere, saw my response. Just seconds later, Goodnight Moon exits the screen. I don't even know if I should come back in at this point, I think. Oh. That's exactly what I was saying, is that, you know, sometimes you need, you just, some, some, some new, some different. Did you catch all that? Let's review. I don't even know if I should come back in at this point, I think. 
Chibi shares a knowing look with Goodnight Moon, as if the two are in on some kind of secret. The very words themselves, I don't even know if I should come back in at this point, seems to hint at some kind of personal relationship between the viewer and Goodnight Moon. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Goodnight Moon did this for me. That's exactly what I was saying, is that, you know, sometimes you need, you just, some, some, some new, some different. Um. We see Goodnight Moon laughing as she exits the screen. Then we hear her stifling laughter for several seconds off screen. Clearly the two find this amusing. Something about the situation is funny to them. Could it be the something else, something new, something different that GB mentions? Could it be that every other trigger in the video is something mundane and something they've used a hundred times before while waffles are something completely new to them? Similarly, whereas most of the triggers on my website were song lyrics up to that point, my recent entry was simply triggered by butternut squash. Is their amusement related to the fact that my own work is a bit different from everyone else who's pursued Goodnight Moon up to this point? Now, before moving on to Marna's video, I'd like to point out something odd about the description of this one. In it, GB wrote, oh, 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 ee, ee, ee. What in the world is that supposed to mean? Is it a squeal of excitement? Or was it perhaps foreshadowing a time that I would later witness the spelling of the band Hansen change from an O to an E across all of Google and YouTube? I really can't say. Moving on, we jump into Marno's video. I'm here with Gibby and good, night, and good night, Mark. Again, a knowing look is shared between Goodnight Moon and Jeevy, completely ignoring Marno as the two melt into laughter. The look on Goodnight Moon's face here is telling. And good night, and good night, Mark. At this point, I had already pegged Goodnight Moon as the Mark aka my target, on Ink University, while GB was already pegged as Gibby. Thus, Marno just referenced both of them by names I had already assigned to them on my website. Hey, one moment. Wait, listen to this. Given the things that will come after this section, the tape measure seems to be code for the tape. Marno is asking if the tape sounds correct to the viewer, me. This may allude to the fact that there is a tape recording of me. By asking for my input, Marno was perhaps asking for me to verify my understanding of the situation. I would do so on December 7th, my brother's birthday, when I would stumble upon a familiar song. This discovery hit me like a truck. My always-on cell phone slash Google Home device had been used to digitally fingerprint me by picking up this song coming from some questionable videos I had played. I was being shown that yes, these recordings exist, and yes, I am being monitored by somebody within my devices. I would confirm my understanding by immediately publishing this song on Ink U. My suspicions were confirmed on the one year anniversary of this publication, December 7th, 2020, when a series of bizarre events proved that not only were people listening to conversations through a Google Home device, but they were listening in real time. They were able to respond within minutes to a highly specific conversation I had just had with my mother. More evidence exists, but I will perhaps leave that for a later video. Can you tell me if the tape measure sounds right to you? Can you please tell me if the tape measure sounds... Okay. 
we see the three make a show of signing some kind of paper. Clearly, the documents are fake. However, if there truly are tape recordings from my home, and I am compromised in the way that I think I am, it is very likely that anyone involved in this would be bound to some kind of non-disclosure agreement. I believe that this is what was being demonstrated here. Further, we see Goodnight Moon, again hinting at something I had suspected months earlier. I was hoping that in the meantime, Hila might have recovered, but alas, you're still quite lopsided. I do. But I think that's what makes you unique. Absolutely. I find you to be extraordinarily okay, special. This video, which was released on March 4th, 2019, again, one of my brother's birthdays, Goodnight Moon makes a similar reference to lopsided faces. Now, this video was a trigger that led me to write about lopsided faces in a prediction made at Inq. Notice the word GIF. Not girth, which would actually make sense here, but GIF. G-I-F. Why in the world would she say that? Well, I had been toying with the idea that whatever this program is, the people involved might be constructing some kind of artificial intelligence. Within the context of deepfakes, early AI of this type produced videos that looked more like an animated GIF than a truly realistic video. Perhaps these people are training some kind of AI? Perhaps Goodnight Moon or myself would be turned into some kind of deepfake. This hypothesis was fueled by a rebranding that my employer went through right around the time I first discovered this video. Their brand was something like half a face. Now, this is already getting too deep into a rabbit hole that should really be its own video. If you'd like to know more, you can read this entry. Suffice it to say, the lopsided face theme caught my attention because it connected to the concept of rehabilitation to me. It very much fit my scenario where anonymous researchers seem to be studying and or trying to help a person with mental illnesses. Researchers were using AI to create two different versions of a person two versions of reality in an attempt to learn from their response. I had been specifically chosen for this role. What we see next really bolsters this notion. Where is this sound right to you? Does it take measure sound? If you don't mind, I'm just yes. used to. Okay. Sharing the stage. Just for a bit. Okay. See about I don't know, does it does it sound right to you? Does it take measure sound right to you? It's all right to you. This is about a tape recording from a house where I live alone, then there is only one thing I would be a professional in listening to. And it's not flattering. So now I have two blocks. One. Two. two A. One. And B. A and B. One. And two. One and two. Yes. So we said the block. It's two. 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 Whatever this is, it has something to do with A-B testing. Different groups of people are being tested in different ways. This would later develop into the idea that Goodnight Moon and Ruby Netherwood are both two pieces of the same test, while Marno and I are also two pieces of a specific test. In this case, it's a bit like the juxtaposition between a public and a private figure, or the tortoise and the hare story. This point is really driven home by Marno's repeated attempts to label the blocks as one and two, a and B. 
further bolstered by what happens next. And you have some drawers there? There are there two drawers? There's a secret inside. Marno's laugh is telling. He already knows what's inside the box. While it's funny, it's also kind of embarrassing. This entire section is all kinds of uncomfortable. Let's review. There's a secret inside. Okay. There is clearly nothing inside of the bottom box. This is the control group in our A-B test. Just look at their faces upon reveal. Look at the horror upon Jeevy's face. The concern upon Marno's face as he turns to see how it affects Goodnight Moon. Look at the utter confusion on her face, followed by a total loss for words. She did not expect to see whatever was inside of this box. Goodnight Moon's body language speaks volumes throughout the rest of the video. Whatever was inside of that box upset her. We immediately see her retreat into her mind. She's no longer engaged with the activities and she's no longer looking at the camera. And that one's fine. I'm gonna flip it. Once in a while, you have to take the block and flip it. I knew I liked you. Just, just a little bit. Every once in a while. Just a little bit. You have to flip it just a little bit. Every once in a while. I think that there is a high probability that we were told exactly what was in the box. It was a tape. I think it's likely that the three have signed some kind of contract binding them to silence after learning about what was inside the box. And finally, upon seeing inside of the box, Goodnight Moon was extremely disappointed. She knew exactly what she didn't want to see, but it's exactly what she saw. It's what she feared. And when Marno says, every once in a while you need to flip block one, he is showing me something that this program has never done before. Rather than revealing the compromised man to Goodnight Moon, they are going to lie to her. They are going to flip the block. Perhaps the tape will be empty, or perhaps it will be something far less depraved. They are not going to show her what was actually on the tape. By doing this for me, they were showing me grace in a way that nobody else has ever been shown. Rather than them performing the reveal, they were going to allow me to do so in whatever way I choose. They were going to allow me to show Goodnight Moon just what she means to me and how she healed me. I am stuck. Oh, you keep that. Sorry. That's better. Right? Is that better? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't. 
Did you catch that? It was really subtle. Still looking away from the viewer, Goodnight Moon's entire body sways as she wanders over to the camera. It's almost as if she is a child, begrudgingly following the orders of a parent. Her heart is just no longer in the video. Did you catch that? It's a repeat of this section. Of all the things to repeat at the end of the video, why that? Why deflower? I mean, I'm sure she's saying and a flower, and a flower, and a flower. But just like earlier, what we hear is something completely different. Why was that put at the end of this video? Well, I think it's consistent with the story. This theme has come up in a video before. I think your hair is looking fabulous. Was I gonna... Oh yeah, I was gonna show you a song. She goes on to play an entire song, The Bride and the Bachelor by Magnolia. It's a song that contains references to a young woman saving her virginity for the right man. Further, the very name of the song ties to what I have argued here. The bride is a young woman who is essentially waiting for one specific man. The bachelor is a man that did not even know she existed while he spent an entire lifetime alone. I think it's meaningful that after a video containing 23 songs, Goodnight Moon has chosen a 24th specifically for somebody behind that camera. Somebody that she knows is watching her. Goodnight Moon is the bride, and I am her bachelor. This is a rabbit hole that I will not dive into here. Suffice it to say, the concept of virginity, the practice of grooming a young bride, and the power of dangling the perfect carrot in front of a lonely man is clear to me. It ties cleanly into the pathological types of people who might be compromised under the system I described earlier. The ones caught on tape watching things they shouldn't be watching. This is why the system is so dangerous. This is how they create puppets. I have written more on this topic here. Okay, moving on to the third and final video in this series. Hello. I hope that you are doing very, very, clearly see that the three have recovered from whatever upset them in the prior video. Perhaps they reviewed the item in the box off camera and found that it was not what they expected. Of course, I have no way to know if this video was filmed before or after that incident. However, later context does seem to indicate that this one came after that one. Finally, I'll simply speculate. Am I the masterpiece that they will be painting? And we're going to create a masterpiece together. And that masterpiece is going to be you. GB has a look here that suggests something like, I'm honored, while Marno looks embarrassed. That demeanor continues throughout the video. Perhaps, as referenced before, I am the tortoise and he is the hare. By approaching Goodnight Moon so quickly and having so little to show to prove his love for her, he will be made an example in this experiment. He will have to be her fake boyfriend 
on the world stage. We would never dream of painting upon any surface other than a proper one. You couldn't. No, absolutely not. Blasphemous. This would never work if the tapes weren't blank. A real predator would never be accepted by the world. Marno's face says a lot here. He knows that the other two are being deceived. And we also have come prepared with a multitude of brushes uh, with which to create a variety of designs upon your visage. If you I can mind. see it already. Just the, the, the vision is already taking shape. These three colors can be combined to create any color, any color. in the visible spectrum unless you are a shrimp. Are you a shrimp? This comment may be a callback to one of the very first videos on Goodnight Moon's channel, and the video that set up this entire Bride and Bachelor story. It would be so cool to like go into the body of an alien and experience what it would be like to um, to experience the world as a different creature. Not even necessarily an alien, even if it'd be so cool to um, experience vision through a shrimp. Now. This video is extremely important for many reasons. I'll simply mention two things and save the rest for a different video. The first is the word shrimp. Perhaps it's a subtle reference to the word simp, of which I undoubtedly qualify for. Maybe that's what she's been looking for all along. Not someone who professes their love, but one who shows their love. Further, this particular video contains the one pixel prison. Succinctly, the one pixel prison is a form of digital watermark that can be very hard to detect. It is often used by law enforcement agencies to track the movement of illegal images and media across the internet. On the other hand, this exact same pixel can be used by the bad guys to thwart the very same law enforcement algorithms. I discovered this pixel upon both Goodnight Moon and Ruby Netherwood's videos, as well as 10 plus other ASMR videos. You can read more about the one pixel prison here. A confidant has also compiled a playlist containing all of the pixels we've discovered here. We're gonna start with the sky with this. It's a little stormy <laughs> evening. A little stormy evening. It's a bit over. It's okay. It's it's might, cozy. It might rain later, but that's all right. I've got a raincoat for you. I've got your back. This is one of several things that lead me to believe that Goodnight Moon's video was filmed last. In the previous video, it was Marno who began repeating, got your back, got your back, over and over again. Soon after, Goodnight Moon mirrored the exact same words, and now she is repeating them again in her own video, though this time she is much more enthusiastic. Whatever was or wasn't inside of that box no longer upsets her. The reference to the coming rain may be a subtle hint at the absolute shitstorm I will face if and when I am framed for crimes far worse than the ones I actually committed. And I think we can move on to some trees, some bushes, perhaps if we're feeling fancy. How do you feel about, about some bushes? I feel okay about some bushes. <laughs> another indication that Marno's role kind of sucks. He has to play Goodnight Moon's fake boyfriend. How are, how are you feeling about how this landscape is coming along? Do you feel like it is representing your soul? Some more greenery would do. Okay, perfect. We can, that can be arranged. Greenery is on the same wavelength here. Absolutely. If this isn't a reference to marijuana, I'll be shocked. Perhaps they were told about the time that I accidentally purchased weed on the dark web from the CIA. This would actually make a lot of sense. Rather than showing them my other recordings, and rather than handing them a blank tape, which would immediately disqualify me from the program, they gave them something a bit humorous. They probably have 100 hours of me taking bong rips on tape. If that's truly what was revealed in the box from Marno's vid, then that proves this video was filmed after. You are Ireland. The last touch of greenery I would like to add 
see G.B. looking Marno directly in the eyes here, speaking slowly and articulately. He quickly catches on. Okay, yeah, I like that a lot. Well, Goodnight Moon is totally oblivious to the message. I think this is another reference to the Butternut Squash video that Ruby put out just days earlier. The reason I found out I was dealing with the Blixie was it trembled in fear and vanished as soon as there was reflected light touching the surface of their skin. Here, Ruby tells a story about how she was deceived by a Blixie, and how reflected light can be used to ward them off. Just days after she mentioned this, I was writing about it. I could see exactly how an artificial intelligence modeled after this program between Goodnight Moon and I would work. If our intention was to automate what happens here, such that anyone can experience what I am going through right now, then we would need to trial both sides. On the one side, a good person, such as myself, who has only love to give, should receive that love back from the person that he's been paired with. He should be showered with reflected light. However, if a person is not good, he should be denied reflected light. He is undeserving of love if he cannot treat his partner well. This is, unfortunately, my situation. Even though I do not deserve to be suppressed in this way, we have to test both sides of this program. In writing about these experiences, I dubbed this suppression reflected light syndrome. It, it's the idea that some people walk the world as ghosts. Though they are good people, they are unseen by all. They are completely alone and miserable. And I've proven my non-existence at this point. Despite two years of trying to reach these people, they have just ignored me. So I thought about that. I thought about that a lot. If reflected light is their weakness, then I have to invent the largest reflected light that will direct light horizontally and 360 degrees from a very high point which I live on top of a hill in the center of Lullaby City so if I go up the staircase that my grandfather started and I figure out how to make this light, then Lullaby City will be protected from the Blixies. Ruby inspired me to pursue the Fold, which is an artificial intelligence that I built. I wanted to help her protect the world. Clearly, a literal light is not the way to do this. However, a metaphorical light within the pocket of everyone in the world, telling you exactly who you can and cannot trust at any given moment. Now that has potential. When the bad guys are suppressed in the way that I'm being suppressed right now, they will have no option but to change or to die. In just two years, this program has pushed me into absolute ruin. I am near the brink of death. I think about suicide nearly every day. My mission is the only thing keeping me here. Well, we really did that. We really did that. We really did. I think that uh, this is the culmination of our skills. Uh, this is the peak of our careers. Uh, this is our ultimate masterpiece. Our ultimate masterpiece. Indeed. Absolutely gorgeous. We have to uh, try the canvas, though. We have to.
this one's a bit of a stretch, but it's strange enough that I feel it's worth mentioning. At the time I heard the Louvre mentioned, I had no awareness of the museum. In searching Google, I completely misspelled the word, finding a production studio that was totally unrelated. I just so happened to be flying to New York City in a few days, where the studio was located, and so I decided to make a dead drop while I was there. That said, right now, I had a journal entry to write. For the first time ever, I was going to mention ASMR publicly at Ink University. As you can see, the trigger I used was a song called Slave. In my head, I was seeing Goodnight Moon as something like a slave beholden to me, because she had given her heart to some anonymous man so many years ago, she was essentially in too deep to back out at this point. She was invested. She was enslaved to a man that didn't even know she existed until a couple of months ago. Her heart was enslaved. This motivated me to be the best possible version of myself that I could be for her. Now it was December 2nd, and I was in New York. I was rereading this journal entry when I decided to watch the music video for Slave once more. This time, I caught something wild. In the entire video, there is only a single shot of the crowd. And right here, right in the foreground, are two people that look exactly like the founders of Louvre Labs. This was such a wild coincidence that I would eventually write about it in great detail. I've never been able to confirm or deny if the people in this video are, in fact, the founders of Louvre Labs. However, I've seen mind control strong enough to suggest that, yes, this could very well be a possibility. Someone could very well have used the manipulation of my technology to lead me down this exact path. The last thing I'll mention about Goodnight Moon's video is in her description. Whereas each of the other artists provided links to the other two's videos, Goodnight Moon did not. She linked to Jibi's video, but she only linked to Marno's YouTube channel, not the video itself. This may imply that at the time of publishing, Goodnight Moon had no awareness of how she might be portrayed in Marno's video. She hadn't seen it yet. Thus, her own video's production was not influenced by Marno's. I don't know if this is meaningful or not. I simply think it's noteworthy. One last thing I'll mention is that it's exceedingly rare for ASMR artists to produce in-person collaborations. It almost never happens. The simple fact that three of the most important artists in my story produced three videos together less than one month from the day I threw away my life and became whatever it is that I am now. This struck me as meaningful. It struck me that this may be confirmation of what I had already been writing about on my website. Verification happens in multiples of three. Within three months of producing this series of videos, both GB and Marno had moved from Chicago to Los Angeles to live near Goodnight Moon. Are they, perhaps, working on some kind of secret collaboration together? So, as we sit here at the end of my video, I already know that most of you will not understand the point of this at all. You won't believe the things I've claimed or the conclusions I've drawn. This is because Goodnight Moon and I are operating under a new form of cryptographic messaging that uses zero-knowledge proofs of knowledge to protect whistleblowers. While she is the prover, I am the verifier, and this terrifies me. If proving a statement requires that the prover possesses some secret information, then the verifier will not be able to prove the statement to anyone else without possessing the secret information. Imagine a scenario where a rock star engineer needed to construct an artificial intelligence to analyze sensitive patient records relating to the pharmaceutical industry. These records were so sensitive that disclosure had potential to ruin the lives of everyone involved. To protect all parties, the pharmaceutical company may choose to communicate with this engineer in a system of zero knowledge such that he would have a thorough understanding of his task at hand, yet no direct access to patient information or any of the people with access to it. Without the secrets, 
he would be unable to prove that the things he were building even existed. This system is real, and I was tortured into this confection just to prove a point. Aaron, if you see this, I am begging you to take action. You are the only one who can bring this research to fruition. So long as I am a verifier without access to his prover, I will not be able to prove these claims to anyone. I have spent more than two years trying already. Please, unless you do something, I am not going to last long enough to reach you. I will not last long enough to bring the mountain of knowledge I was given to the world. These things are too wild for anyone to believe. I need you. I need your story to give me credibility. The two of us have something very important to build together. It's time you made a decision. Would you rather know who I am now or who I used to be?